Hi students, see you again. So today I want to discuss about the module question discussion for electricity. Okay, let's see the question. Okay, first one, they're talking about the metal coat by the polystyrene ball, the hang between the two metal plates, there's a R and also the S. Okay, now the metal plate, they are connected to the extra high tension. A strong electric field that between the metal plate, there's a R and also S, they will produce when the e -R -E -T -E -H -T is switched on. Okay, now we go to answer the first one. What means for electric field? So electric field actually is a region. Region when a uh, electric charge there experiences an electric force. So that one we call it electric field. That means the surrounding of the charge. They got the force. So that surrounding we call it as a electric field. Okay, let's see the answer. There's a region where an electric charge experiences electric force. Okay, now when the metal coat polystyrene ball they oscillate between the two plates for three minutes. So that means R and S, they oscillate for three minutes. And also the current flow is 0 0.3 ampere. Now you need to calculate the total charge transfer between the two plates. So remember the charge formula. Okay, charge formula is a Q equal IT. So the R is 0 0.3 multiplied the time taken. Time taken, remember here is a minutes. So in the convert become a uh, second three times sixty. So total is a fifty four coulomb charge. Okay, now C, the frequency of the oscillation of the metal coat polystyrene ball can be increased by using one of the metal list. Okay, so now they want to increase the oscillation. Okay, what we need to do? First one, they ask you about the distance between the two plates. Okay, you want to make it oscillate faster, sure the distance must be smaller. Number two, the mass. The mass must be smaller also because it's easy to oscillate because of inertia smaller. Okay, last one, the voltage must be higher. High voltage, they mean they produce more current. Okay, let's see the first one. Diameter between the two plates. Actually, not diameter, there's a the distance. Although the Malay, there's a distance. So, distance between the two plates should be short. Okay? So, short distance. What's the reason? Okay, reason is you can oscillate faster. Okay? So, from here, they say oscillate in a short time. Okay, when you closer, then no need to oscillate for bigger anchor. After that, the time taken should be longer. So, this one, the time becomes shorter. Okay, mass of the metal coat must be less. Okay, low mass, you can say they're easy to oscillate because of the inertia. Okay, here they can say increase the acceleration and also the speed because the mass already low. Okay, now we go to number three. Okay, number three is the uh, EHT voltage must be high. High voltage means they produce more current or you can say strong electric field. Okay, the electric field to produce surrounded, they will increasing. Okay, now based on your answers, one, two and also three, Choose one which are most suitable to increase the frequency. So the answer when you choose there's a short, low, and also high should be the Z. Okay, then we continue to the next one. Okay, now the nylon track. Okay, just now is a nylon track, it's a 8.1. They're replaced by the copper track. Okay, copper track is a, a conductor, they can conduct electricity. So what happened to the motion of the metal coat polystyrene ball? Okay, when the copper that absorb all the charge, suppose the metal coated there cannot oscillate already because the charge already absorbed by the copper. So we see the answer here, stationary. So that means the metal coated polystyrene bro that cannot oscillate because don't have any charge to the plate. Okay, so from uh, actually it's in the plate god, but the charge already flow to the copper track. So that means the metal ball, they cannot conduct electricity already because they already absorbed by the copper. Okay, give the reason. So the reason is no charge on the metal coated ball. Okay, because already go to the copper, you also can say the charge is earth. Okay, now we go to question two. There's a two diagram. Okay, they show about the connection. So the first one, they show the bulb in a series. Okay, second diagram in a barrel. 
So we're going to see the which one diagram they show by the circuit. So 3.2. Okay, now we need to draw. Draw the electric circuit diagram for the photograph in 3.1. We need to draw the schematic. So they want to draw 3.1 only. So we just draw. You must have the switch, the three bulb, and got four battery. Okay, so we just draw. Okay, this one is the answer. Okay, remember the question. This one asks you which one parallel, but now the one to draw is a series. So you do misunderstand the question. Okay, now we go to C. Diagram 3.3, they show electric uh, circuit. They assume the internal resistor of the battery is negligible. So we do not count the internal resistance. Calculate the effective resistance of the circuit. So effective resistance, this one is a barrier, so we need to solve first. So this one, both also 10, we straightforward take the 10 over 2. So become 5 already. 5 plus 1 is a 6 ohm. Okay, so if you want to using the formula 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10, so this one become 5 ohm. Effective is a 5 plus 1. So you get 6 ohm. Okay, number 2, what's the reading for the emitter? So the formula should be V equal IR. Okay, V is a 12. Okay, the R is a 6. So we can calculate what is the current. So the current should be 2 ampere. Okay, then we go 3. 1 of the 10 ohm, this one, either 1, remove from the circuit. What happened to the emitter reading? So if 1 you remove, so 1 and another 10 ohm should be series. When they become series, mean the resistance increasing. Resistance increase, current should be dropped. Okay, because V equal I R, I and R should be inversely proportional. So the answer is decrease. Okay, then we go to the question 3. Okay, they show about two diagrams again. Two electrical circuit. The emitter, dry cell and the bulb are identical in the both diagram. Assume internal resistance of the dry cell is a zero. Okay, you need to underline the correct answer. Uh, in the bracket, complete the sentence. So the sentence is the bulb in 6.1 and 6.2 connected. Okay, both also connected in parallel. Okay, now we compare the bulb first. Okay, before we go to answer the question. 6.2, the bulb is a less. 6.1 is more. Okay, let's check the battery. Battery is the same. Okay, emitter reading. 6.1 emitter reading is a bigger compared to 6.2. Okay, so the conclusion is, as the bulb increasing, okay, and also the emitter reading also increase. Okay, this one is what we can conclude. Okay, let's check the question. Okay, first one, they want you to compare the number of the bulb. Okay, number of the bulb should be 6.1 more than 6.2. Compare the reading of emitter, also 6.1 is more than 6.2. Okay, relationship. So the relationship, they want to between number of bulb and reading. Actually, that's a directly proportional. So as the number of the bulb increase, the reading of the emitter also increase. So better you write in full sentence. If you want to write directly proportional, also can. You just write number of the bulb directly proportional to the reading of emitter. So for this one, please write full sentence. Okay, then we give the reason. Cause the difference in the emitter reading of 6.1 and 6.2. Why the reading emitter different? So we must talking about the resistance. Because the bulb more and less that will affect the resistance. So resistance 6.1 is less than 6.2. Because your arrangement in parallel. Okay, when you add the bulb again, so your resistance becomes less and less. If you don't want to mention resistance, you can say about the current. Okay, current 6.1 is more than 6.2. So they will affect the emitter reading. Okay, now we make the deduction relating the answer in the 6C. That means you say resistance and also the number of the bulb. So as the number of the bulb increase, the resistance will be decreases. If you say current, as the number of the bulb increase, then the current will be increased. Okay, let's check the answer. As the bulb increase in parallel connection. So make sure you mention parallel connection because when you just say the bulb increase, maybe series, maybe parallel. So they will be different. 
So we mentioned bulb in parallel connection, so the resistance will be decreases. So if you say series, when the bulb increase in the series, so the resistance will be increased. So better you mention how the connection of the bulb. Okay, then we go to E. Okay, 6.3, they show the electrical circuit. Bulb P, Q, R, S, they are identical. Okay, now we see the connection. P and Q is a pair. R, S is a series. Okay, which two bulb light up brighter? Sure, P and Q, because they are in parallel. Okay, give one reason. Okay, if they're connected in parallel, means what? Means they get the full voltage. Or you can say the resistance become less, current is a more. Okay, let's check the answer. Resistance is a low, current flow become high. Or either you say the voltage for the P and Q should be the same. Same like the ORI, because there is an in parallel. Okay, now we go to question 4. Okay, this one is a lighting circuit of the house. You need to underline the correct answer. Okay, by complete the sentence, the bulb in the diagram 6 are connected in series. Okay, because you take the extra wire, you can see the switch. Every bulb got the personal switch. Okay, what will happen to the other bulb if the one bulb blow? Okay, suppose it's okay. One bulb blow, the other still can function. So that means the other still light up. Okay, all the bulb in diagram 6, the label 240 volt 60 watt. Every bulb power is the same. Okay, what means by 240 volt 60 watt? This one I think I call you to memorize already. So from here, the object now is a bulb. So you're talking about the bulb lah. Okay, the bulb will release how many joule? 60 joule of the energy per second when they're connected to the 240 volt uh, power supply. So we see the answer. Okay, the bulb will release energy at 60 joule per second. So you must say joule after that per second. Suppose this one is a power. Then after that, they're connected to the power supply 240 volt. Suppose this one center is a fixed one. You just change about the object. You change about the energy. Then 240 volt should be the same. Okay, then we go to the 2. Calculate the current in the circuit when only one bulb is lit. Okay, now we go and check about the diagram again. Because you need to do the calculation, we need to know the info. Okay, the info, you know 240 volt, 60 watt. Okay, so we need to calculate the, okay, the current. So we're just using P equal VI. Okay, so from here, P is a uh, 60. So we take the 60 over 240, there's a volt. So I get the current should be 0 0.25 ampere. Okay, there's a current flow uh, flow through the circuit when only one of the bulb is lit. That means one bulb function only. Okay, now we're going to see the question uh, number 3. Calculate the total resistance of the circuit when all the bulb is lit. Means all the bulb is light up. Okay, one of the bulb light up, the current should be 0 0.25. Okay, this one is a parallel. So that means we know one of the bulb current is 0 0.25. So we need to find out what is the resistance for one bulb. So we're using V equal IR to find the answer. So it should be 240 over 0 0.25. Then we know the resistance for one bulb is a 960. Okay, this one situation, there's a parallel. So we're using the formula for parallel, 1 over 960 plus 1 over 960 plus another 1 over 960. Suppose you take the 960 divided by 3, that's the answer. So from here, I know the effective resistance is a 320 ohm. This one is an overall resistance for the circuit. Okay, now number 4, how can the bulb connector increase? That means I want to make the resistance increase. This one just 320. I want to increase more. So the connection must be in series. Okay, now we go to question number 5. Okay, question number 5 is so about electric tooth. Okay, the stove, they're using the heating the element made of the wire. 
Now the electric stove, there's a label 2402 kilowatt. So question again. So you mentioned about object first lah. So now it's an electric stove. Okay. They need, they will release how many joule? 2 kilojoule. Okay. Of the energy per second. Okay. As they're connected to the 240 volt power supply. Okay. So electric stove release 2 kilojoule of energy per second when connected to 240 volt supply. Okay. Calculate the energy used for the 30 days. Okay, now they're 5 hours per day. Okay, the electric stove is used for 5 hours per day. So from here, we multiply kilowatt hour. So when you want to calculate the unit, must be kilowatt hour. So the kilo is 2 kilo. 2 multiply 5 hour. So become 10. Okay, multiply 30 days again. Then we show the calculation. Okay. So 2 multiply the 5, multiply the 30 days, so it should be 300 kilowatt hour. So this one means 300 units. So when 300 units, you need to calculate the cost. Take the 300 units, multiply the 20 cents. So 300 multiplied by 20 cents, so I get it. There's a 60 ringgit for one month. Okay, now is the question 4. Okay, the keyword I underlined already, there's a large quantity of the heat. They want to design to produce large quantity of the heat. Okay, for the heating element. So remember, remind you again, when you want to produce high heat energy, the resistance must be high. If for the normal circuit, you just want to light up the bulb, the resistance must be low because you want more, more current to pass through. So remember, heating element, resistance must be high. Then the more energy can be released. Okay, we go and check this one situation before we go to uh, every explanation. Okay, first one, we're going to check about structure of the wire for the heating element. We got straight, we got coin. Normally, we need the coin. You see the coin, the wire is more longer. Wire longer, resistance become higher. Second one is a type of the wire. Normally, we're using the nine crop. Okay, nichrome is for heating one. Okay, reason nichrome got high melting point. You also can say they got low res they got high resistance. Okay, cross sectional area must be uh the like uh, the smaller one. Because cross sectional area and resistance is uh, inversely proportional. When I say small, then the resistance becomes high. Okay, we check the question. Okay, first one structure of the wire we need to coin. Reason longer. Longer means high resistance. Okay, number two type of the wire, we need nichrome. Nichrome is a high melting point. Okay, normally high resistance, you mentioned already, we don't want to mention again. Okay, cross-sectional area, I want the small. Reason, also high resistance, is it? So we're using more heat energy produced. Okay, based on your answer, which one is the most suitable? So we find it the coin, nichrome, and small. That should be S. Okay, then we go to number 6. Okay, the bulb is connected to the emitter and also voltmeter. So, emitter is a series, voltmeter is a parallel. Okay, emitter reading 0 0.2, voltmeter reading is 0 0.8. Okay, now state the physical quantity measured by the voltmeter. Voltmeter, they want to measure is a potential difference. You also can be say voltage. Okay, now we need to calculate the resistance of the bulb. So, resistance of the bulb is using V equal IR. Okay. So, from here, uh, V 2.8. Okay. Over I 0 0.2. So, I get the answer. The R should be 14 ohm. Okay. Total energy dissipated for the bulb in 5 minutes. So, total energy from here, we're using the volt to calculate. The formula should be VIT. E equal VIT. So, the V is 2.8. I is 0 0.2. Okay, time taken should be convert to second. Okay, so I show VIT. You also can using I squared RT. You also can using V squared T over R. Up to you. So from here, I need to convert the time taken. Final answer, 168 joule. Okay, then we go to C. 
Okay, table two, they show about the electric iron label. Okay, again, uh, the label. So from here, they got model R, S, and also T. Okay, we compare what the different. Okay, first one, they're using the element is a different. Okay, using nichrome, some using the constant. Okay, let's see the fuse. Fuse one is a 5 ampere, we got 4 ampere. Okay, so we check got another things or not. Okay, the others should be the same. Just the two things should be the different. Okay, now we go through the question. Okay, based on the table 2, state the suitable characteristic of the iron to remove uh, the creases on the cloth. Okay, give the reason for the suitable characteristic. Okay, remind you again, iron. Iron want to produce a heat. So, they ask about the heating element. So, the resistance must be high. Okay, the wire, we need to coin wire. Okay, so the next one, reason, high resistance. Okay, number two, material for heating element, we need to nichrome. Nichrome is a high melting point. Okay, suitable fuse. Okay, the fuse suitable, we normally want to choose the 5 ampere. So the reason, later we need to calculate that. Uh, before you want to choose the current, you need to show V equal IR actually was an I. Okay, so from here, I choose 5 ampere. So I need to give the reason. So the reason, the value must be slightly bigger than the current flow in the circuit. So after I do the calculation, I get it for uh, the current equal 4.16. So if I'm using 4 ampere, that means not enough. Okay, you're already less than the actual current. So I need to slightly higher. So I choose 5 ampere. Okay, so that one is uh, electricity. So I will continue some of the questions for the electromagnetism. Okay, okay, now we go through module question for the electromagnet. Okay, let's see the first question for electromagnet. They show about number of thumbtack attracted by the electromagnet. Okay, so now the first one, they call you to tick the correct answer in the box provided. Okay, electromagnet is what magnet? That's a temporary magnet. So at the wire PQ, please label the current direction. The current must start from positive, is it positive, then P to Q, then go up. So the current is P to Q. Okay, then the current flow through wire P is increasing. Can you state what happened to the number of the thumb tag? The number of thumb tag should increase. Okay, then the next one, give the reason. When the current just increase, means the electromagnetic field, or you say the strength becomes stronger. So the answer is electromagnet is stronger. Okay, question six. Okay, they show about the magnetic field. Okay, they produced by the current carrying conductor. Okay, so from here you mark the direction of the current flow. Current start from positive, go to negative. So the current must be flow down, flow downwards. Okay, mark with the arrow. Okay, the plotting for the compass. So when they go downward, we're using right hand grip. Okay, when you point downwards, the magnetic field is your finger. So your finger should be the clockwise. Okay, when the clockwise, the up one should be show to right hand side. Okay, then we go to name the rule that we use to determine. The answer is right hand grip rule. Okay, then we need to compare concentration of the iron filling at the P and also the Q. Okay, we go back and see the question diagram first. Okay, with comparison, I need to zoom. Okay, P is closer with the wire. Q is outside. So that means P sure stronger the magnetic field. Okay, so Q become weaker. So another one is a distant. Which one distant is a closer? The magnetic field for the distance must be closer. Okay, you can say the iron filling. Iron filling is closer at the P part. At the Q, the iron filling becomes far a little bit. Okay, so we go through the question. Okay, the concentration of the iron filling. Okay, P must more than the Q. Okay, number two is distance of the region P and the region Q from the wire coin. Okay, P is closer. So the distance Q is further. So from here, P is less than the Q. Okay, Q distance is further. 
Okay, the strength of the magnetic field sure P stronger than the Q. Okay, now relationship between the strength uh, and also the concentration. Okay, if the strength higher, means the concentration must be higher. Directly proportional. Uh. Okay, distance from the wire coin and also the strength. So if you distance further, that means the strength become weak. Is it? So from here, one further, one uh, increasing. So that means the strength become low. So it should be inversely proportional. So you can say the distance closer wire coin, the strength of the magnetic field increasing. Okay, seven, they show about the current carrying wire placed between the two opposite poles of the two magnetic magnet. Now the wire, they will swing upwards. Okay, now the combination of the magnetic field and also the current in the wire, they produce a resultant force. Okay, name the rule to determine the direction of the force. Okay, we got current, we got magnet. So this one we're using Fleming left-hand rule. Okay, now in the diagram 7.2, you draw the resultant magnetic field produced. Okay, then using the arrow, show the direction of the resultant force. Okay, north to south. So you're using your left hand to point north to south. North to south. After that, the current is go up means there's a uh, come to you okay if they come to you means you point like this so the right hand side so i show the force go to right hand side so i draw okay this one is my drawing north to south okay now the force go to right hand side because there's a dot the current is come to you so you need to draw the magnetic field there's a curve curve at the left hand side then you draw the force go to right hand side okay please label this one is a resultant force Okay, after that, they show you the moving coin emitter. Okay, the scale of the emitter in the sand battery is not uniform due to the incorrect shape of the magnet used. So, in the space below, you need to draw the correct shape of the magnet. Okay, remember for the emitter, the shape must be concentrate, must be curved at the middle because they want to concentrate the magnetic field. So, from here, I show the drawing. This one is a three marks. Okay, drawing curve a little bit for the magnet. Then the center. You draw the magnetic field, you also curve, focus at the center. So we can say there's a concentrate. Okay, now the reason why you need to draw like this. So the reason is concentration of the magnetic field. You also can say they produce a stronger magnetic field. Okay, then we continue. The parallax error will occur when you're taking the reading from the emitter. Can you suggest one additional component you want to add? Suppose it's a mirror. Okay, we put the mirror the beneath the scale. Reason, you want to avoid the parallax error. So how to avoid? Normally, when you want to avoid, the pointer and the image might exactly overlap. So that means you cannot see the second image. So that one we call reduce the parallax error. So the component plane mirror. Reason, pointer and image of the pointer must be overlap to avoid parallax error. Okay, now we go to the question 8. Okay, this one question eight. There's a uh, show the compass needle direction of the compass x with switch is off. Okay, now off. Uh, so when on, we see what happen. Now you need to indicate. Okay, to draw the arrow direction of the current in the circuit. So you draw the current. Current must start from positive. Number two, you need to draw the magnetic field pattern of the cardboard. Okay, sure it's a circular. Okay, there's a concentration. So when center, there's a closer. When further, the, the circular become far a little bit. Okay, then this one is a clockwise or anti-clockwise. You need to using your Fleming, uh, sorry, using the right-hand grip. So when the current just up, there should be the anti-clockwise. Okay, now you need to indicate the arrow of the compass T. Okay, anti-clockwise. So this one should be point to the right-hand side. Okay, we check the answer. Okay, first one, I label the current how to flow. The current is up. Okay, I draw the concentration. That means the circular shape. Okay, center closer, outside further. This one is a magnetic field. Okay, last one, I draw the compass direction. They go to the right-hand side. Okay, what rule are you using? There's a right-hand grip rule. Okay, then we go through the three diagram here. 
Okay, that's a three electric motor design X, Y, and also Z. They want to build a small portable fan. Okay, we see what's the difference first before we go to answer. Okay, first one is the shape of the magnet. This one is a semi-circular. This one is a rectangular. Okay, another one should be the number of turns. This one just got 10 turns. This one got 50 turns. This one also 50. And the third one should be the battery. Here got three battery. This one just got one. Another one is a three. Okay, so we go to answer the question. Number of turn of the coin must be more. Okay, number of turn more that means you increase the strength. Okay, so from here they increase the force, increase the strength of the magnetic field. Okay, the next one is the number of the battery also must be high. Okay, more number battery that means you more current flow through the circuit. Okay, then the third one should be the shape we want to choose is a semi-circular shape. Okay, semi-circular shape that means you can concentrate, concentrate the uh, forces between the two magnets. So from here they say concentration for the magnetic field or you can say there's a rather magnetic field. Okay, finally, which one is a suitable? So when you choose the number of them more, so the Y should be out. Okay, and also semi-circular. So the answer should be motor X. Okay, now we go to the next question. This one question should be the question number four. From the SPM 2011. Okay, they show about the transformer. 12 volt, 24 watt. Okay, that one is for the electric motor output. Okay, now you need to state the transformer use. What type? You see the number of turns is more. Here is less. So this one is a step down transformer. Calculate the number of turns. So remember the formula N S second secondary over the primary equal vs over vp you want to reverse also can you want vp first you want vs first it's up to you so the formula vp over mp equal vs over ns so vp is a voltage primary 240 mp okay primary 600 okay vs 12 volt number of turns for secondary we don't know so after that you get the answer is 30 turns Okay, calculate the current flow in the secondary coin. So we know the volt. So 12 equal V equal IR. So the I is how many we do know. R we also do know. So we cannot use V equal IR. We go to using the power. P equal VI. Okay, so we get it. There's a 2 ampere for the secondary circuit. Okay, then we go to the C. 2.2, they show about the same transformer. Okay, but now it's connecting the electric component in the box X to light up the DC bulb. The keyword is a DC bulb, direct current. So what you need to do, from convert the AC to DC. So we need to using the component that's a diodes. Okay, so our lesson just until the question 4. So the next time I will continue the electromagnetism for the question 5 until the end. Okay. So hopefully you check your answer and mark it. If you got any problem, that means you can text me. So just thank you for your watching.